Thank you, Minister, for your kind words. They're much appreciated. I, I, I'm really delighted and excited to be here today. In academic life, we get many opportunities. When Dave called me, must have been about a year or so ago, was it, where's Dave gone? Oh, yeah. oh there, Dave. <laughs> a, a, a year or so ago, to talk about the Sir Cumbie program. Dave calls me about many things, and he, he's, he's, he's amazed at all his inspiration and his ideas. But it was very, it became very clear very quickly that this initiative, this, this Sir Cumbie initiative, is something special. And, and, and it's special not just because of the opportunity to, to work here with all the fantastic facilities and the people which you have here, but because of the scale of uh, um, uh, the ambition of your government. Uh, and, and that's not just about how many noughts there are on the, on the number, uh, um, which, of course, as an academic, of course, uh, if, if it's a pound sign and more noughts are, do we pay more attention? But, it, but it's not just that. It's, a, it's that the more I've worked uh, and, uh, and this uh, coming program has moved forward, the more I've understood the broader um, engagement and ambition which your government has and the, uni the university has in making this work. The fact that you're here today, I, I can't imagine that for a, 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 an appointment of a professor in London or in the UK, we would have a minister coming to announce that appointment. But, but um, the, the fact that you are here today, I think, is, a, is an example of the level of engagement and ambition which, which your government has in making this work. And, and, and to me, that's... It's made me believe that we have a really exciting opportunity here. Uh, and that's what I'm about. That's what I want to try and do, is, is turn that opportunity in, into a reality. Having said that, there's a fantastic, that I believe the opportunity here is huge, I, I'm also very aware that what we want to try and do is not going to be easy. As Dave's already said, solar energy is the most abundant renewable energy source on the planet. It also has the advantage that the nuclear reactor which powers it is 93 million miles away. And so in, in terms of health and safety policy, that, that simplifies things a bit. Um, I, I, I think in general there's a consensus that solar energy is going to play a much larger role in global power production. It's already a $140 billion a world uh, industry globally. Already there's more money invested annually in solar but in all other renewables put together. So the, the opportunity, I think, is entirely clear that, that solar um, has a huge opportunity to help us um, move forwards our energy generation and particularly to decarbonize our energy generation. But I, I think for purpose of this program and what we're trying to do here is not just about decarbonizing energy, which of course is fantastic, but it's about the manufacturing opportunity. It's about the opportunity that, that, that solar is developing, that there, are, there is going to be more and more investment. It's going to be a major industry globally. And it's about whether the UK, and particularly Wales, can be part of that adventure. And that's what we're trying to drive forwards here. Um, as a scientist, solar is great. Um, it's always wonderful new materials you can study and wacky theories you can test. And this is what, this is what I love. This is, this is what I've spent my, my bread and butter doing, looking at quantum confined structures. I actually work quite a lot now on trying to use sunlight to make fuel, which, which is um, maybe not going to happen in, 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 the, in the near term. It's not a technology, but, but scientifically it's great. Um, it is an area which is hugely competitive. Scientists love to work in solar, the students love to work in solar, everyone has the idea solar is fantastic. But it means that if you're going to succeed in solar, you have to have critical mass, and you have to have interdisciplinary teams. Uh, and without those, it doesn't work. You, you can't do the, global, the, 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 the world leading science without that. But I think the scale of the secondary funding we have and the partners which we're bringing together mean that we have the opportunity to make a real difference. Uh, and that, that, to, that to me is um, really exciting. But the, I, I think the big challenge is not the, can we do fantastic science, we're going to do fantastic science, and Dave and I are going to get lots of fun. Jenny's going to do some wonderful theory of something or other, and that's, that's all great. Um, and and the, the partnership between Imperial and Swansea, that's, of course, fantastic. But I, I think the bigger challenge we've set, we've set ourselves is not just to do the great science, but to translate the science into a manufacturing process which can both have an impact upon global sort of generation, but also develop industry here. And, and one of the visions here is how we can translate all the wonderful science we do actually into manufacturing and develop the, the industries here and of course the, the, the focus that you have in South Wales 
on, um, on industry and the engagement you have in industry. In, in London, I spend my time being surrounded by economists and the business people and all this. When I come here, I'm surrounded by people who actually want to make something. And that's, uh, that's a different world. And that's, that, for me, is really key. And I think that's one of the reasons why, from Imperial's viewpoint, this collaboration makes so much sense. We have to realize that the current solar market is dominated by crystalline silicon cells made in China. Um, and these are efficient, they're stable, and because the Chinese have been very good at taking the cost out of production, as they are it, 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 centrally by economies of scale, they're not that expensive. And therefore, um, if the UK is going to be part of the manufacturing of new solar technologies, there's no point in us trying to compete with China at what they're good at. Um, and so if we're going to be part of that adventure, then we, we are not going to be making silicon solar cells. Um, we, have to do, we have to build on what we're good at, which is innovation, and being nimble and trying new things. And we have to develop technologies which are not just cheaper and more stable or whatever than, than, than silicon, but things which are fundamentally different. We have to develop products that go where silicon can't go. Uh, and the vision we have, which is the vision which is very much behind what you see behind you here, is printing. But rather than taking silicon ingots and slicing them up, um, which are relatively fragile, relatively heavy, can we print thin films of materials onto um, flexible substrates, onto steel if you're tartar, or onto maybe on glass if you're NSG, or onto plastic, or whatever it may be. But can we print things which have attributes which are fundamentally different to the current technology? So they may be lightweight, they may be flexible, they may be colorful for the architects. Um, and maybe most important of all, you can integrate their fabrication into existing product lines. So we could envisage in printing solar cells on the steel panels which you have here so that that fabrication is done as part of making the steel panel, which means the investment costs are much lower in terms of the risk of investment, and the installation, essentially, you get for free. And therefore, you bring down the cost, not because the cell's cheaper, but because the whole system is cheaper. And that, if we can do all that, then we have a way uh, to compete in this solar market and actually to do things that the Chinese can't do. And that, for me, is a really exciting opportunity. It's not going to be easy, but the SARE company program isn't starting from nothing. It's starting from all this already, and it's starting at Imperial. We have one of the world's largest programs looking not at the engineering of the, of, of the solar technologies, but at the science. And, and bringing those together and bringing in the partners both across Wales in Bangor and in Cardiff and other partners across the UK and Oxford in particular on Bath, we already have strong collaborations. If we can make that all work together, then I think there's a real opportunity to make a difference. And we also have fantastic people. I'm, I'm delighted that Dave's here. If, 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 if it wasn't for Dave, I wouldn't be here. Dave's the inspiration and the, and the driver behind all of this, and you're very lucky to have him here. And I'm very pleased that other people at, at, um, at Imperial are already getting very excited about this. There's been a, a strong track record of interaction between Imperial and Swansea over many years, not just with specific, but with the Welsh Centre for Printing and Coating. And I'm very pleased that, that Jenny has... Oh, where's Jenny gone? Somewhere there. Jenny. But, um, Jenny has agreed to be part of this adventure, and I think they're going to be... They're already, it's already obvious there are many other academics at Imperial who are, are also going to be very keen to engage with, with what we have here. Uh, so I, I think we have the potential to put forward a really world-class team to make, to make a real difference in this area. And, and I hope it help us not only to do great science, but to help Wales and the UK, but particularly because Wales already has this, uh, uh, this fantastic capabilities in, in the manufacture, the, the, the printing facilities you have here and some of the companies, um, that there's Dysol here and G24i here. If, if, if these aren't companies which find it easy, it's challenging, this area. But bringing them all together and bringing the science together across the UK seems to me to be a fantastic opportunity. And I, I really, I'm, just, I'm very grateful to you and your government for giving us the opportunity to try and turn all this science and all this engineering into a reality. And so really all I have to say is thank you. I think I'm going to have to learn to say this a bit better, but Diokun Farah. <laughs>